Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm talking about DX codes. A roll of 35 millimeter film contains really all the information that you need to know right on the canister. So this roll of Velvia, for example, is the E6 process for color slide film. It has an ISO of 50 and it can hold 36 exposures on the roll. But there's usually another part of these canisters that's use isn't so immediately obvious. And that is the DX code. Now, if we roll this canister over, we see this strip here that's made up of black and silver squares. But what is it and why is it here? That's called the DX code. And it was introduced by Kodak in the 1980s. And it's actually really useful for certain cameras. This section on the roll of film is actually used by cameras to automatically detect information about the type of film, including the ISO and how many exposures can fit onto it. So in order to understand exactly what you're looking at and what your camera is capable of reading, let's break it down into a few different sections because the DX code actually contains three pieces of different information about the film. Each DX code contains a total of 12 different squares on this section. And a square will either be black like this one or silver like this one. The silver squares are actually electrically conductive and the black ones aren't. So when you put this into a camera that is set up to register DX codes, it's actually making contact with these squares and detecting the information electronically. That means that when the camera is reading it, it will register different information based on what's conductive on the strip and what isn't. Now, you can tell if your camera is set up to read these DX codes based on whether or not it has these silver pins inside the film compartment. And these pins are what make contact with the DX code on the roll of film that you put into your camera. The more pins that you have inside of your camera, the more amount of information that the camera is able to automatically detect about the film that you're putting inside of it. A lot of cameras like these, point and shoot cameras, do have DX capabilities inside of them. But an SLR that's entirely manual will not have DX coding, such as this Canon AT1 or just a lot of other SLRs that you find. And you can see this in the film compartment because these SLRs will lack the conductive pins inside of them. So these 12 blocks of the code break down into four sections. And if we hold the canister with the knob here on the left, this is how we read all that information. The leftmost top and bottom squares are always silver on any canister. And these are just ground contacts, so the camera will always register these. The next section is what tells the camera the ISO of the film, and it's controlled by these top five blocks. Now, because this code has been around for a number of years and has been used on a wide variety of films, the code can actually make up enough combinations to register between 25 ISO all the way up to 5,000 ISO. But currently with a lot of modern films, you're not gonna find anything with an ISO higher than 3,200 that's DX coded. Now, as an example, these two rolls have an ISO of 100 and that's represented with two silver contacts and three non-conductive contacts on the top row. This roll is an ISO of 400 and that's determined by two silver contacts and three non-conductive contacts. So really that's all the information that your camera needs to look at in order to understand the ISO of the film. And when a camera like an automatic point and shoot knows the ISO, then that's enough for the camera to be able to automatically determine exposure for you. But besides all that ISO information, and there are still five squares on the rest of the code that give the camera even more information. Now this section is three blocks long and it tells the camera how many exposures long your roll is. Now right now when you buy film, your choices are between 24 exposures and 36 exposures on a roll. In the past, they did used to make 12 exposure rolls, which you can still find sometimes, and 72 exposure rolls, which you really don't come across too often anymore. A 24 exposure roll has two silver contacts here and one non-conductive contact here. And a 36 exposure has two non-conductive contacts and one silver contact. Now this final section is only made up of two blocks on the bottom right side of the code and it tells the camera how much tolerance that type of film has for exposure. A lot of cameras that have the ability to read DX code are just a lot of these cheaper point and shoot cameras that will entirely expose your images automatically. That being said though, a lot of these cameras do like to play kind of fast and loose with the exposure on your film. And not all of these cheap point and shoot cameras are able to read that section of the code and be that specific with the 
tolerance of the exposure. So a camera with more silver contact pins inside of it is just more likely to be able to read a wider variety of DX codes. And that does mean that they're more likely to give you a better exposure. There are of course higher N35 millimeter cameras out there like early Canon EOS models that do have DX reading capabilities inside of them. Now as an example of a point and shoot, this little Bell & Howell camera here that I have has four contact pins in the back to read DX codes. And that means that it's able to read a wide variety of films that I can put into it, ranging from 25 ISO all the way up to 3200 ISO. Meanwhile, this Canon SureShot Owl here that I have only has two contact pins in the back to read DX codes, meaning that it is only set up to read ISO 100 or ISO 400 films. So it's just much more limited without that number of pins to be able to read the information. And because they're automatic cameras, I don't have the ability to manually put in the numbers myself. Also, if you're shooting a roll that just doesn't have a DX code on it, then a lot of these automatic point and shoots will just treat it as a default ISO, usually 100 ISO. So sometimes those types of films are better to be used in cameras that allow you to set the options manually. So always do some research based on the camera that you're gonna use, so especially with these automatic point and shoot cameras, because they often have a lot of limitations that you might not be aware of. And DX coding can be pretty useful because it does allow you to use these cameras and not have to worry about too many details. But of course, using manual cameras is still really important because sometimes an automatic camera is just never gonna give you that perfect exposure that you want in your image. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to post all sorts of analog content all the time about different cameras and films and formats and histories and just random stuff. And if you're interested in supporting the channel at all, there is a link to the channel's Patreon down in the description and you can head over there and see what that's all about and consider supporting the channel. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.